Today we look at the best and worst NBA players from every NBA team to see where these teams have been at the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. We're only using each player once, so let's go. The best player to have ever played for the Chicago Bulls is obviously Michael Jordan, who is still the greatest player of all time, but the worst player that's ever played for the franchise is without a doubt Tyrus Thomas. He wasn't the worst player, but Bulls fans will always remember the fact that they drafted LaMarcus Aldridge second overall in 2006 and traded him the same night to get the number four pick in Tyrus Thomas, who never accomplished anything in Chicago. The Milwaukee Bulls Bucks best all-time player is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who still holds a slight edge over Giannis, even though he could still take it one day. Their all-time worst player was Robert Trailer, who they once drafted ninth overall, but he only ended up playing two seasons for the team, struggling with weight issues and injuries in both, only playing a total of 93 games for them, so he was definitely a waste of a pick. The all-time best Los Angeles Lakers player is going to be Magic Johnson. Kobe's the best Laker ever, but Magic was the best player to have ever played for the team. With his five titles and three league MVPs in just 13 seasons, it's what puts him at the top. Well, over the past decade or so, so LA's seen some pretty deep lows. I think right now Luol Deng is LA's all-time worst player because he was given a four-year $72 million deal and only played him 57 games for them and it wasn't his fault. The Lakers just decided to stop playing him but I think in a few years we'll look back and say that Westbrook was LA's all-time worst just for the fact that he was brought in to help LeBron in AD win a championship in LeBron's last few years in the league and now he's kind of stopped that from happening putting a sour taste on the end of LeBron's career. While on the other hand Deng's contract was given when not much else was going on for the Lakers. So the New York Knicks their best player is Walt Frazier, who was involved as a leader in both of the team's only two NBA titles. He was an elite guard and is still widely considered one of the best players of all time. But those titles were won over 50 years ago, and the Knicks have seen a lot of terrible stuff since then. But the worst Knicks player ever was Jerome James, who was averaging 5 points and 3 rebounds a game, then got a 5-year $30 million contract from them. Then went on to play only 90 games for the team over the next 5 years and averaged 2 points and 1 rebound a game, in what was one of the worst contracts of all time. With the Atlanta Hawks, obviously their best player is Dominique Wilkins. It's going to take a lot for someone to pass him all time based on the 10 plus year career he had for them, being on the top of his game for all of them. Their worst player wasn't even bad. Ed McCauley is a Hall of Famer. He had a great career for the Celtics, but now the only reason people usually ever know or hear his name is because he was that guy that got traded to the Hawks in exchange for Bill Russell. And that's pretty rough. The best player ever for the Spurs is obviously Tim Duncan, while the worst is Al Frederick Hughes. And do you know how hard it was to actually find a bad player on the Spurs that they had signed or drafted? He Houston Rockets all-time greatest is Hakeem Olajuwon, who won the team back-to-back -back titles the years MJ was out of the league. And Hakeem could do it all on both ends of the floor, plus he was a good leader, which is why some people call him one of the most complete basketball players ever. On the other hand, Royce White is the worst that Houston's ever seen. They drafted him 16th overall, but he never played a single game, basically because he was scared of flying on planes. The Portland Trailblazers best, at least in my mind, is Damian Lillard, who slightly beats out Clyde Drexler. Their worst all-time, though, is Sam Bowie. We could have gone the route of Greg Oden, but with him, they miss out on Kevin Durant, but with Sam Bowie, it made them miss out on the greatest of all time. The best player to ever play for Dallas, of course, is Dirk Nowitzki, even though one day Luka could take this one, but it's no surprise it's still Dirk. As for the worst, I'd have to say Rajon Rondo, who Dallas got fresh off of his Boston Celtics run. They gave up a ton of players for him, and he ended up being a problem in the locker room and sitting out for the playoffs. The Charlotte Hornets spot goes to Kimber Walker currently, even though I think eventually LaMelo Ball will take it, and there's no real arguments for that one. While you could make an argument for Adam Morrison being their all-time worst, but I'm instead giving that to Vladi Divac, who they infamously traded Kobe Bryant for, and Vladi only played there for two pointless seasons. The Phoenix Suns' all-time best at this current point in time is still Steve Nash for the multiple deep playoff runs, the two MVPs and all. Maybe in a few years if the Suns keep up their success, I could give this to Devin Booker. But don't forget how great Steve was, while everyone will forget Dragon Bender, who Phoenix wasted a fourth overall pick on back in 2016, just for him to average four points a game. With the Denver Nuggets, we're seeing all-time greatness from them today by way of Nikola Jokic. But back in 2000, two, we saw their worst player in Nikolos who they drafted fifth overall, and the man never averaged four points per game. Shot 30% for his career and was out of the NBA after only four seasons. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, obviously their best player of all time is Kevin Garnett, the only Wolves player to have ever won a league MVP, and even though he never won a championship, a large part of that might have been because their worst player of all time played at the same time as KG, and it was Joe Smith, who signed with the Wolves back in 1999 as a free agent. He wasn't too much more than an average player, but the Wolves signed him on an under the table contract that was so cheap it was illegal so that the team could be good now and he would get a bigger deal later on. Well, David Stern found out about it and stripped the Wolves of five first round picks from 2001 to 2005, right in the middle of KG's prime. The Toronto Raptors spot for the top goes to Kyle Lowry. Sure, Kawhi Leonard led them to their championship, but it wouldn't have happened without all the sacrifices Kyle made that season. And combine that with the rest of his long tenure there and it's why he takes it. While the worst player is Rafael Arruyo, who was picked eighth overall and played three seasons in the league. Not good ones either.
either. Of course, the Magic's all-time greatest was Dwight Howard, who will take the spot for a while. While their worst is honestly a two-way tie between Serge Ibaka and Fran Vasquez. They got Ibaka by trading Oladipo and Sabonis, which still hurts my head to think about, and the fact that Serge left after that season makes it that much worse. While Fran Vasquez was drafted 11th by Orlando, then he just decided to stay overseas and never play in the NBA. With the LA Clippers, their spot is obviously taken by Chris Paul, and their worst spot is obviously taken by Michael Olawakandi, who was picked first overall and became one of the biggest draft busts of all time. For the Utah Jazz, Carl Malone is their guy, while John Drew is their worst, and you might not immediately even remember who John Drew was, which already says something, but just know that he was the guy that along with Freeman Williams, that this team traded away Dominique Wilkins for right after they drafted him. The spot for the Heat goes to Dwayne Wade thanks to his long career for the team and the multiple championships that he brought them. Not only did he show that he could lead the team to a title, but he showed that he could also take a back seat and be a second option to LeBron while winning a championship. And speaking of LeBron, Michael Beasley was drafted second overall by the Heat two years before he got to Miami, which should have made him the perfect complement as a young player on a contender. But he turned out to be bad enough that the team basically just had to dump his salary after his second season. The Cavaliers then have LeBron James as their all-time best player, and nothing else needs to be said. But we can say something about their worst in Anthony Bennett, who by most people's opinion and just straight facts is the biggest NBA bust of all time. The 76ers have had some legendary Hall of Famers throughout their time, but Dr. J still stands at the top of the ladder for them, while no one would argue that Andrew Bynum stands at the bottom. Ever since that dude left the Lakers, he was just a giant walking dumpster fire on every team that he landed on. Philly lost out on some great players trading for Bynum, which hurt even more. Over in Boston, nothing needs to be said about Bill Russell being their goat, and nothing should be said either about Vin Baker being their worst of all time. The Celtics traded for him for some reason, and soon after he developed a drinking problem, got to weighing over 300 pounds, and was released just two years later. With the Pacers, Reggie Miller has this one. He never brought them a title, but got close for years, had a couple finals runs, but just couldn't get over the top, but still gave the team more than enough memories to look back on. While on the other hand, most people have probably never heard of Rick Roby, but he's worth a mention given the fact that Indiana drafted him third overall in 1978, and he was terrible. What makes it even worse is that they picked him when Larry Bird was still on the board. It's pretty weird that for the Wizards, Wes Unseld is their best player almost 50 years later, and a guy like John Wall or Bradley Beal has never taken the spot. But it is what it is, and the Wizards' worst player, who needs about as least of a description as anyone on this list, is Kwame Brown. For the Nets, I'm giving their all-time best spot to Kevin Durant, and seeing how this list has gone and how these past couple of years have gone, I'm giving their worst spot to Kyrie Irving because he was the main reason their super team broke up, and I think in a few years we'll look back at this time in a negative light like we have for some of these other worst players. For the OKC Thunder, since we already used Kevin Durant, we'll give this best spot to Gary Payton, who was a ruthless defender and one of the stars on his team alongside Sean Kemp for years. Their most infamous player on the other hand was Olden Polly Knights, but in 1987 the Sonics drafted Scottie Pippen 5th overall, then traded him right away for the 8th overall pick, aka Olden Polly Knights. For the Memphis Grizzlies, it might be premature, but I'm giving their best spot to John Moran. Sure, they've had Marc Gasol and Mike Conley who were stars for years and led them to great playoff runs, but we've never seen a Grizzlies player with the skill and the ability to put up the type of numbers that Ja has. While for their worst, some might say Hashim Thabit, but I never saw a home team player get booed the way that Chandler Parsons did, and I never saw a player waste away an NBA contract the way that Chandler did for the Memphis Grizzlies. The Kings' all-time best player is obviously Oscar Robertson, and their all-time worst is a guy named Purvis Ellison, who the Kings picked first overall in 1989 and traded after only one season. Shout out to the Kings. For the Pelicans, the spot would go to Chris Paul, but since he already had the Clippers spot, it goes to Anthony Davis, with no real argument needed, while their worst player sadly goes to DeMarcus Cousins. He put up huge numbers when he got there, but the fact that they traded Buddy Heald for him and he only lasted 40 games or so before getting injured is what lands him here. Warriors best player, at least in my mind, is of course Steph Curry, who I placed here over Wilt Chamberlain due to his success in terms of championships and change of the game, while their worst player is Joe Barry Carroll. The Warriors traded from the third spot in the draft to number one in order to draft him, while the Celtics then went on to take Kevin McHale third overall, who was the best player that year. So the Warriors traded up and selected the wrong guy, who wasn't terrible, but he wasn't great either. Then finally we have the Detroit Pistons, and their all-time best player is Isaiah Thomas, to bring in the Bad Boys Pistons to consecutive NBA championships over some all-time NBA legend. And everyone knows their all-time worst is Darko Milicic, who had no business even being drafted in the first round in 2003, but went second over Melo Bosch and Wade. If there's anything I missed, comment and let me know, and I'm out.